sudden economic tempest is sweeping across the global business landscape, leaving a trail of devastation in the wake across countries. Ballooning inflation is pounding small businesses still recovering from pandemic lockdowns. As businesses shutter their doors and individuals face financial ruin, the ominous specter of insolvency looms large, casting a pall of uncertainty over livelihoods and futures. In the eerie shadows of this economic uncertainty, a chilling truth lurks in the corridors of Canada's financial landscape, where insolvency rates are skyrocketing at an alarming pace, leaving a trail of shattered dreams and economic ruin. It's not just a chilling reality of today's business world, but also a harrowing reality for Canada's financial landscape. In 2023 alone, Canada witnessed a staggering 23% increase in insolvency rates, with business bankruptcies skyrocketing by an unprecedented 41%. These figures are not mere numbers. They represent the harsh realities of businesses struggling to stay afloat in an increasingly challenging economic climate. Businesses going under means job losses now becoming inevitable. The Canadian Federation of Independent Business estimates that small businesses employ over 8.4 million people, accounting for a staggering 68.8% of the total private labor force. And as of December 2022, there were 1.22 million employer businesses in Canada. Of these 1.19 million, 97.8% were small businesses, 23,395 or 1.9% were medium-sized businesses, and 3,120 or 0.3% were large businesses. The unemployment rate, which stood at a concerning 5.8% in 2023, is expected to climb even higher as more businesses fold under the weight of economic pressures. In December 2023, the number of unemployed individuals stood at 1.2 million, marking a significant increase of 202,000 or 19.3% compared to the same period a year ago. According to data released Friday by Canada's top financial regulator, business insolvencies jumped by more than 41% in 2023, sending shockwaves through the nation's economic landscape. This staggering surge in insolvency rates casts a dark shadow over the stability of Canadian businesses, signaling a troubling trend of financial distress and instability. As the specter of bankruptcy looms large, the repercussions of this ominous uptick in business failures reverberates across sectors, raising grave concerns about the resilience of Canada's economy in the face of mounting challenges. In this video, we will demystify the dark secrets beneath these alarming numbers, what grim fate awaits the Canadian labor market, and what they portend for the country's economic health. In Canada today, business insolvency, the canary in the coal mine of economic health, is surging to levels that would make even the most seasoned economists' blood run cold. But the true toil of this economic catastrophe extends far beyond mere financial losses. Behind every shuttered storefront lies a trail of shattered dreams and broken lives. Hard-working Canadians, the economy's lifeblood, are being cast aside, left to grapple with the soul-crushing reality of unemployment. In a country where the cost of living seemingly knows no bounds. In total, 4,810 businesses filed for insolvency during 2023, which marked the largest annual volume in 13 years. According to the chair of the Canadian Association of Insolvency and Restructuring Professionals, or CAIRP, Andre Bolduc, many businesses are already on a razor's edge. The additional cost to service their debts due to higher interest rates will mean even less room to cover increasing costs of business going into 2023. Atlantic provinces like Newfoundland and Labrador had the highest percentage of increase in insolvencies last year at 141.7%, followed by British Columbia at 65.4% and Nova Scotia at 55.6%. These numbers are not just mere statistics, they represent the struggles and shattered dreams of countless entrepreneurs and employees across the nation. Even worse, the closure of small businesses creates a vacuum that allows larger corporations to consolidate their power, leading to the dominance of oligopolies in key sectors of the economy. It then becomes a world of market control, predatory pricing, and the suffocation of small and medium-sized enterprises. This concentration of market control not only stifles competition, but also limits consumer choice and innovation, and leads to higher prices, further eroding the economic vitality of the nation. The situation is a stark contrast to the principles of a healthy, competitive market that a country as big as Canada should boast. 
Reports suggest that the Canadian telecommunications industry is dominated by only 10 large companies, with five among them accounting for an 84% market share. The banking industry is no better, with the big six banks controlling 93% of the market. Oligopolies wield their immense financial power like a weapon, engaging in ruthless price wars and predatory pricing strategies that leave smaller competitors bleeding out on the battlefield. The oligopolies' pockets were deep enough to absorb the losses, but for the small business, it was a death sentence. Tragically, this is not an isolated incident. A good number of Canadian small businesses report being victims of predatory pricing tactics. To worsen the case for SMEs, the barriers to entry erected by oligopolies are like an impenetrable fortress. SMEs who contribute more to the job market face financing challenges having relatively high borrowing costs compared to those in other OECD countries. There's also a shortage in angel investor financing for companies companies that seek investments of less than $5 million. While the COVID-19 pandemic may seem like a distant memory, its economic repercussions continue to haunt businesses across Canada. Supply chain disruptions, shifts in consumer behavior, and the strain on finances have since left many companies struggling to regain their footing. On another troubling note, the rise in crimes from theft and vandalism to sophisticated cybercrime attacks, with businesses often bearing the brunt of this troubling trend. From shattered storefronts to emptied bank accounts, the surge in criminal activity is pushing countless entrepreneurs to the edge of financial ruin. The costs associated with these criminal activities can quickly drain a company's resources, pushing it towards insolvency. In 2014, the total tangible costs of crime in Canada were estimated at about $28.7 billion, and a greater number of these losses are on businesses. This figure includes direct losses from theft, vandalism, and fraud, as well as indirect costs such as increased security measures and higher insurance premiums. For small businesses already struggling to stay afloat, these additional expenses can be the final nail in the coffin. Moreover, property crime increased by 11.2% in 2023, with Vancouver alone seeing a 7.3% property crime increase. This is added to the burden on businesses, forcing them to allocate precious resources towards security measures. The retail sector has become a prime target for criminals, and the results are nothing short of a pocket. Apocalyptic. Shoplifting has reached epidemic proportions, with losses from theft alone mounting to $4.5 billion annually. The Retail Council of Canada, or the RCC, says some of its members are reporting a 300% increase in thefts since 2020, pegging the losses at $5 billion a year. But it's not just petty theft that's causing concern. Organized retail crime, including brazen smash-and-grab robberies, has risen by horrifying numbers, leaving businesses reeling and customers afraid to shop. Being a victim to crime may not sound like much to larger corporations, but for a mom-and-pop shop, it can mean the difference between staying open and closing their doors forever. The increased stress and anxiety due to the constant fear of criminal activity is also a great concern. The hospitality industry, already battered by the pandemic, is now facing a new nightmare rising crime. Restaurants and bars are reporting an increase in criminal activity from vandalism and theft to violent assaults on staff and customers. The fear and trauma experienced by employees and patrons alike are causing some to abandon their jobs, leading to staff shortages. One third of restaurants in Canada are operating at a loss due to a lack of available labor. Another troubling reality is that as crime rates soar, so too do insurance premiums for Canadian businesses. Overall, commercial insurance rates saw an increase of 7.44% in 2023's second quarter. This increase is even worse for businesses facing an increased risk of criminal activity. These additional costs can be the tipping point that pushes businesses already struggling to make ends meet into bankruptcy. Therefore, the rising tide of crime in Canada is not just a threat to public safety, it is a cancer eating away at the very foundation of the economy. To make matters worse for business, the government isn't helping. High taxes become too burdensome, causing businesses to buckle under the weight. Canada has the 12th highest combined business income tax rate, higher than the United States at 25.8%, the United Kingdom at 25.0%, and the OECD average of 23.6%. The rising business tax rates, making it increasingly challenging for companies to maintain profitability and staying afloat, is also accompanied by rising minimum wage. It limits economic growth by stifling innovation, discouraging investment 
investment, lowering wages, and reducing job creation. Minimum wage hikes, while crucial for workers, have put immense pressure on businesses already grappling with thin profit margins. The delicate balance between fair wages and sustainable operations has proven elusive for many Canadian companies. The situation is further exacerbated by the relentless march of inflation, which reached a staggering 4.1% in 2023, eroding purchasing power and squeezing both businesses and reducing the purchasing power of consumers who now buy less. The skyrocketing cost of goods and services is like a raging wildfire, consuming the profits and hopes of Canadian businesses. As the cost of goods and services continues to soar, inflation remains a persistent thorn in the side of businesses across the country. The stories are heart-wrenching, and the consequences for our economy are nothing short of catastrophic. Businesses are now paying more for raw materials, and that is everything from steel and lumber to plastics and chemicals. But the nightmare doesn't end there. Transportation costs have also exploded, with the cost of shipping containers rising by mind-boggling numbers. The price to transport them by rail rose by over one quarter, or 28.4%, in July 2022, compared with a year earlier. For businesses reliant on imports or exports, these numbers mean a one-way ticket to financial oblivion. And in the midst of this high inflation, workers are demanding higher wages to keep up with the rising costs of living. But for businesses, this wage price spiral is like a never-ending cycle of torment. Since revenues are being devoured by inflation, these wage increases are pushing many businesses to the breaking point. No wonder many small businesses in Canada are considering layoffs or reduced hours just to stay afloat while others are contemplating closing their doors forever. This reiterates the fact that behind every business insolvency lies a human story of shattered dreams and financial ruin. Entrepreneurs who poured their hearts and souls into building their companies now find themselves facing the grim reality of bankruptcy. As if the inflationary inferno wasn't enough, Canadian businesses are also being consumed by the flames of debt. With revenues evaporating and costs soaring, many businesses have been forced to take on loans loans just to keep the lights on. However, interest rates are also rising and these debts are becoming an unbearable burden. The debt inferno is claiming businesses left and right, leaving behind nothing but the charred remains of once thriving enterprises. As if that isn't enough, the drop in consumer confidence coming as a result of inflation has reached a three-decade high, pinching deeper into the revenue coffers of Canadian businesses. With many Canadians cutting back on spending and hunkering down for the economic apocalypse ahead, it's sucking away any hope of recovery for businesses dependent on consumer spending. Addressing the root causes, fostering a more business-friendly environment, and promoting entrepreneurship and innovation are crucial steps in reversing this troubling trend. But will the government and its people take the initiative? One can hardly tell what the future will hold for Canadian businesses. Perhaps most concerning is the broader trend of declining entrepreneurship in Canada as aspiring business owners face mounting barriers to entry and survival in an increasingly hostile business environment. From burdensome regulations and and red tape to limited access to capital and resources, aspiring entrepreneurs are confronted with a daunting array of obstacles that discourage innovation and risk-taking. As a result, Canada is already losing its reputation as a land of opportunity, where the entrepreneurial spirit once thrived. The emotional toll of bankruptcies and insolvencies is immeasurable, with many individuals grappling with depression, anxiety, and a sense of hopelessness. The after-effects extend further beyond the business owners themselves impacting their families, employees, and communities. The insolvency crisis gripping Canada transcends mere statistics. It serves as a poignant reminder of the inherent vulnerability within our economic framework. Urgent collaboration among policymakers, industry titans, and citizens is imperative to devise enduring solutions. Failure to do so will cast a formidable shadow over the path forward, presenting formidable changes for companies aspiring to flourish in the contemporary business arena. If you like this video, hit the like button and help us spread the word. And don't forget to subscribe to get notifications on our latest news and analysis. In the meantime, check out one of these videos here to learn more. Thanks for watching.